Hello guys and welcome back to another video on the environmental law series and today in this video we are going to learn about various declarations, conventions and protocols in relation to the environmental law. In this video we are going to move on from one of the oldest declarations and protocols to more newer or more recent declarations and protocols. So moreover we are going to also look into the various declarations and protocols which have been signed by India. So let's move on to it. The first conventions we are going to look into is the Ramsar Convention. This was signed in the year 1971. Okay, It was signed in the Iranian city of Ramsar. The aim of this declaration was to preserve the ecological character of the wetlands. Now this declaration is also known as the convention of the wetlands. Now what are wetlands? Now wetlands are nothing else but a place where the land okay, is covered by water. This water can be either salt water, fresh water or it can be a mix of both. Now these wetlands of Ramsar site are protected under the strict guidelines of this convention. Okay. Moreover, the World's Wetland Day is celebrated on 2nd February. Let's move on to the Convention on the Protection of World Cultural and the Natural Heritage. Okay, This was signed in the year 1972. Now, the basic objective of this convention was to protect and maintain certain places on earth which has a universal or cultural values which need to be conserved. Okay, Now, this includes various protected areas, sites which are called, called to be as UNESCO Heritage sites around the world okay now many of the indian states indian cities are part of this uh, unesco heritage site some of these which includes taj mahal hampi ajanta caves agra fort etc etc okay so next convention is with regards to the international trade on endangered species of wild flora and fauna 1973 now the aim of this convention was to control or present international commercial trade in endangered species or product derived from them. Okay, now India became part of this convention in the year 1976. Okay, furthermore, let's move on to the Vienna Convention. Now, Vienna Convention was signed in the year 1985. Okay, now this convention was within relation to the protection of the ozone layer and India became part of this convention in the year 1991. Okay. Now, the next convention is the Montreal Protocol which was signed in the year 1987. This was adopted for the reduction of the ozone layer depletion. Now, the Vienna Convention talks about the protection of ozone layer. Okay protection of ozone layer it does not give any sort of suggestion with regards to the reduction of ozone layer okay it talks about only about the protection of ozone layer but the montreal protocol talks about the reduction of the ozone layer depletion okay furthermore in the montreal protocol it seek to cut down the production and the consumption of, of the ozone depleting substances in order to protect the earth's fragile ozone layer. Now, this is with regards to the uh, use of the chlorofluorocarbon or the various making use of other alternatives which can be helped to protect the ozone layer depletion. Now, the next convention is the Nairobi Declaration. Now, Nairobi Declaration was signed in the year 1985. So, this declaration was to address the degradation of the world's ocean and the coastal area to sustainable management and the use of marine and the coastal environment. Okay, so the main aim of this declaration was to protect the coastal areas and the sea waters from the environmental degradation. Now, next move on to the Basel Convention. Now, Basel Convention came into force in the year 1992 was in re relation to reduce the transboundary movement of hazardous waste. Now, this was in relation to what is the reduction in transboundary movement means. Now, transboundary movement of hazardous waste means that there are many developing countries or develop, there are many developed countries who are disposing of their waste from their own country to an underdeveloped country okay, or a developing country. So, what these big nations or the big uh, developed country do that is when their waste or any sort of nuclear waste or any sort of like uh, toxic waste from their own uh, factories and companies they ship this toxic waste from their country to uh, they have to dispose it anyway so they either dispose it in the waters which here is covered by the Nairobi uh, declaration that you cannot dispose 
of any toxic waste or any toxic uh, polluted or any toxic by product which comes from these factories okay in the waters and also you cannot uh, dispose of this uh, toxic waste in the underdeveloped or the developing countries okay so basically the main aim of this basil convention was to minimize toxic waste okay to prohibit shipment from the developed to the underdeveloped countries okay next protocol we are going to move on to is to one of the very famous protocol is the kyoto protocol this was signed in japan in the in the year 1997 now the kyoto protocol is one of the most famous protocol and it focuses mainly on the climatic changes now this uh, pro kyoto protocol was to have a legally binding commitment to reduce the emission of the greenhouse gases okay so this was one of the earlier protocols which very much legally bound many countries to reduce to participate and to reduce emission of the greenhouse gases okay so the next uh, declaration we are going to look into is the rio declaration now this declaration focused in general with rights with regards to the obligation in relation to the environmental rights okay there were 27 guiding principles of the rio declaration these principles include the first principle is with regards to the sustainable development and that the people are entitled to live a healthy and productive life. The second principle is with regards to that these any nation has a right to exploit their own resources but this activity should not damage the environment. Okay. The third principle looked into the right of development in such a manner it should be preserved for the future generation. The fourth principle with regards to again uh, sustainable development and that it should be made an integral part of the process and then should not be isolated from it. The fifth principle looked into the task of eradicating poverty. The sixth principle looked into special situation or looked into special developing countries which need help with regards to the environmental which are vulnerable in nature. Okay, the seventh principle looked into the spirit of the global partnership and to protect and restore the health of the earth's ecosystem. The eighth principle looked into to achieve sustainable development and higher quality of life for people. The princi ninth principle looked into that the state should have strength and capacity to build a sustainable environment by providing scientific proofs and exchange of science and technology. The tenth principle states that there are many uh, decision making which can be looked into which are been best can be concerned with regards to citizens. And there are other principles which you can look into. Okay, I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, just go through all those principles. Okay. Now next let's look into Agenda 21. This was a future plan with regards to the environment. Now Agenda 21 is not legally binding but it is a key of the document of the Rio Declaration. Now next is the Paris Agreement. Now the Paris Agreement was signed in the year 2016. Okay, it is a global agreement with regards to climate change. Next is the Nagoya Protocol, which was signed in the year 2014. This was with regards to fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the utilization. Okay, so the final convention is the uh, Convention on Biological Diversity. This was in the year 1992. Okay, uh, this was held at the UN National Conference on Environment and Development. There are main three main objectives with regards to this convention. The first one is to conserve biological diversity. The second one is the sustainable use of the component of the biological diversity. And the last one is the fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising out of the utilization of the genetic resources so that's all for today's video guys in today's video we looked into the various protocols conventions and declarations with regards to environmental law i'll see you all in the next video bye